here uh, participants of the, of the IPCC Working Group 3 a press conference, uh, dear Jim Skia, uh, you have been heading the uh, writing team and I would like to thank also the UK government for the, all, all the support that you have given, given for, the, for the success of this uh, report. The, 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 the road has been a little bit bumpy and, and you have been forced to ha work much harder than you expected, but uh, I think the end result is uh, great. We are at the moment facing very challenging times. Uh, we, we have learned from the, uh, about this uh, brutal war in Ukraine, uh, which also has, uh, has an impact on the media environment. Uh, uh, and that has meant that uh, attention to this uh, long-term major challenge for the, of the, for the welfare of human and, and kind and, and biosphere has been a little bit lower than, than it used to be before this uh, war. And this war that is ongoing in Ukraine, it has an impact also outside of Ukraine. It has an impact on food security, prices of food, and also prices of energy. And, and, and this is going to hit especially less developed countries, uh, as is the case uh, of, uh, of climate change uh, as well. We have already seen a, a rises of energy prices, both electricity and fossil fuels, uh, and, um, and, and, and that's very high on the global agenda as well. And, and, uh, and, and in the best case, uh, this would uh, speed up uh, reduction of the use of fossil energy and also speed up uh, green transition. In the worst case, uh, interest to mitigate climate change uh, will be challenged because of this, uh, this uh, development. But let's uh, concentrate on the, on the results of this excellent uh, report uh, which form very good basis for crucially needed uh, raise of the ambition level of the of climate mitigation. Although uh, uh, I would like to raise the, the results of the COP26, uh, where G7 and European Union countries made pledges to keep us on 1.5 degrees track, uh, we, we should also keep in mind that the rest of the G20 countries, including the BRICS countries, were not uh, in a position to to offer such pledges that would keep us on, on such a track. This report today shows uh, uh, what are the means uh, and most effective means uh, and most affordable means in the different types of economies to enhance uh, the crucially needed uh, base of mitigation efforts. I hope that this, is, uh, this information will be used by the governments uh, in different parts of the world uh, to proceed uh, uh, with mitigation. The Working Group 2 uh, report, uh, which was published some weeks ago, uh, was, was showing that every corner of the earth is already affected uh, by climate change. Uh, and the report today shows that uh, every region in the world uh, had also an impact on, on climate change problem today. Classically, we have been thinking that uh, the, only the developed countries uh, which have used most of the fossil resources so far are responsible for, for that. But if you, if you take uh, the land use into account, especially deforestation in Latin America, Africa, and Southern Asia, it's, it's shown that, that they have also had a major impact on, on, on the climate problem, which uh, is demonstrating that we need uh, global efforts to be successful in climate, uh, climate mitigation. And besides that, uh, there's also need to uh, pay attention to climate adaptation. We know that the negative trend in, in climate uh, will continue for the coming decades anyhow, and melting of glaciers and sea level rise uh, for the coming, coming centuries. We just celebrated the World Meteorological Day on 23rd of uh, March, and, and there United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres uh, was tasking WMO to, to lead the preparation of major early warning service package uh, to be approved by the COP27 hosted uh, by Egypt uh, this November in Sarmel sake. Only half of the 193 members of WMO have proper early warning services in place, which means that ever-growing impacts are causing dramatically, causing dramatically growing economic and human losses. We have also drastic gaps in weather, climate, and hydrological observing systems, which means that the early warning services, especially in African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries, uh, are, are in very poor shape. 
there's an urgent need to invest in basic weather climate and water observing infrastructures to enhance the early warning service abilities of especially LDC and, and SIDS uh, countries. UN aims at reaching 100% global coverage of early warning services by the end of uh, 2028 uh, to investments and capacity building of meteorological, climate and hydrological infrastructures and education of uh, related national expertise. So to conclude, we have two urgent challenges ahead of us, uh, adaptation and mitigation, both fi financing visionary political decisions and concrete actions are needed for the sake of the welfare of, of current and future generations and our biosphere. Thank you.